Have you noticed that every single year around Formula 1 preseason testing, there always seems to be one new major buzzword or controversy? So for 2020 it was Mercedes's DAS system, for 2021 it was the rake of the cars, and now for 2021 we have a new very weirdly named one called porpoising. So in this video let's explore what exactly is porpoising and what effect it has on the 2022 cars. Let's do this. Okay, so even though for copyright reasons I cannot show you videos of real Formula 1 cars with their porpoising problems, you can see in our screen right now what the purposing problem is exactly. So you can see in this model Formula 1 car that the car is going up and down and up and down and up and down and that its ride height is changing very dramatically until the point where the floor actually touches the track. Now this is a very very big problem and as you can see this is something that can really destabilize the car's behavior and is something that would really uh, get, take confidence away from the driver that was driving the car if the car is going up and down and up and down. And now this is a problem that is happening across the entire Formula 1 field, so in this video let's explore exactly why this problem is happening and what solutions the teams are trying to find in order to fix it. Ok, so now let's say actually take a look at a real Formula 1 car with this porpoising problem. So in this picture we have the brand new Ferrari F175 with Charles Leclerc driving and you can see very front and center this problem. So in this first picture you can see that the car is very very close to the ground with actually this middle part of the car already touching the ground. But then if you go to the second picture you see that the entirety of the car is in contact with the ground and this is something that you really really don't want because when the floor is touching the ground you are damaging the floor and the airflow is really out of control. And then you can see that as the car touches the ground just as you saw in my animation the car then springs back up almost immediately to the point where nothing is touching the ground. And then this cycle repeats itself so you can see that now it begins by with the car up then it gets down and then it gets up again. So this is a very weird cycle and if you see the video that I have linked in the description below that Formula 1 released, you'll see just how much the car is out of control. Ok, but now let's actually understand why this happens. And for this I'm using a template that I found online, I will have it linked in the description down below if you want to color it, but I have it colored in the channel's colors and this will be my 2022 model from now on. Ok, so as you know every single Formula 1 car produces downforce from the front wing, from the rear wing and it this year most importantly from the floor. So you can imagine that downforce is a force pushing the car towards the track in this direction and downforce is proportional to speed. So what is happening right here is as the car goes faster and faster this force keeps growing and growing and growing. And what this will mean if you imagine a higher and higher force being applied on the suspension of the car just as you saw in my video back then, you see that the car is going down and down and down. Now this makes sense because the springs in the suspension are the same but the force being applied is much much higher. So as the car goes down and down and down, the, the diffuser part and the venturi tunnels part of the car right here gets much much closer to the ground. Now what this will mean is that the venturi tunnels will be more and more sealed and up to a certain point this is actually very very good for the venturi tunnels and it will increase their downforce. But as the downforce reaches a critical level, the car will be pushed down so much that this part of the floor right here will actually hit the track. And once this part of the car hits the track, the Venturi tunnels go from producing a lot of downforce and the majority of downforce to the car to all of a sudden producing zero downforce. And what this means is that you just take a huge load of, out of the car and then it springs back up again. And when the car springs back up again, well then the Venturi tunnels are not in contact with the floor anymore, so they are in a perfect position to start producing downforce again. So the car goes down again, touches the track, goes up, down, up, down, up, down, and this is the cycle that is called porpoising. So as you can imagine the car hitting the track severely and in this way can really affect the car's performance and reliability because by hitting the track in this manner you are actually destroying the floor of the car because it's hitting the track so much but this can also lead to other problems. So yesterday in day 2 of testing Alfa Romeo said that they were having a lot of issues with their gearbox due to the porpoising problem because as the car was hitting the ground the gearbox was getting damaged. So you can see the severity of this problem not only for the drivers but also for the technical side of the car. Now teams are already finding solutions to this problem but unfortunately all of the solutions that they are finding actually require the cars to produce less downforce. Ok, so the first solution that they are finding is to actually increase the car's ride height. So by increasing ride height what you are effectively saying is that the minimum distance of the car and the ground will actually increase. Now this will actually solve porpoising because it will mean that the floor will be higher from the ground and will not actually touch it, so this stalling effect that we see in the floor won't actually happen. 
Now, this is a pretty good solution to the problem, but the problem is that these floors were designed to be as close to the ground as possible before this problem happens. So what this solution means is that by having the car further away from the ground, the car will actually produce less downforce. And talking about producing less downforce, the second solution is actually to produce less downforce from the front and rear wing in order for the car not to go down as much. Now, as you can see, all of these solutions are actually bad solutions because they all require the car to go slower. And I say that the front and rear wing is a real solution because one of the things that we have seen with porpoising is that once the DRS flap is open, the car produces less rear downforce and this is actually being seen to mitigate the porpoising problem a lot. So by producing less downforce in the front and rear wings of the car, you could actually mitigate this problem. But now the real solution and the solution that teams are probably going to need to find is they are going to need to find the point in the floor where the car actually stalls when porpoising happens and then try to fix that point's geometry. So by doing this, it would mean that the floor would naturally never reach the point where porpoising would start because as you see, porpoising is really a cycle, so if you don't allow the floor to produce so much downforce where the car lowers so much to porpoising starts, you, you will actually prevent this problem. So once again, this is a solution that would limit the car's overall downforce, but in these scenarios, engineers will really have to achieve a compromise because you cannot have the car hitting the track. This will be bad for the drivers, for the car, and for the reliability, but also for the car's performance because it's much better to lose a little bit of peak downforce instead of having the car hitting the track and actually having unpredictable downforce as you go into a braking point and as porpoising happens in the fastest sections of the track because that's the points where you have the most downforce you don't really want the driver pressing the brakes to only not having enough downforce to make the corner and then just going in front especially in a situation where they are racing each other so this is really a severe problem that can really take a hit into the car's reliability and into the car's raceability and you may be asking yourself, but why didn't engineers solve this in the wind tunnel? Well, they already knew that this problem would happen. This is a problem that's very common to all ground effect cars, but in the wind tunnel you have a problem. So in a Formula 1 wind tunnel, what you have beneath the floor is kind of a tread right here. So if you can imagine a tread going like this, so you have a moving floor underneath the car in order to simulate the track. and when this floor is moving, it's moving at a very high speed in order, to, in order to model the track performance of the car. So you can imagine that in the track, the car is moving very fast through the asphalt. So that's what this thread underneath the, the wind tunnel is trying to model. Well, they, in the wind tunnel, engineers cannot have the bottom part of the car actually touching this thread or it would destroy it. So they inevitably have to increase the car's ride height, which is one of the solutions to porpoising. So that's why porpoising doesn't appear in the, in the wind tunnel and that's why engineers couldn't preemptively have fixed porpoising and why they are now needing to fix it in the track. Now I expect most teams to have at least a small solution to this come Bahrain testing but for the remainder of Barcelona testing I expect the cars to have this problem and I think that this is a problem that teams are going to have to solve with setup in a race by race basis. Okay so that is porpoising that's one of the biggest problems that will hit this generation of cars and the problem that will be very very interesting to see how engineers solve. So that's been it for this video I really hope you guys enjoyed my explanation and now understand this concept and stay tuned because later today or tomorrow morning I'm going to have a recap of the full Barcelona testing but in the meantime that's been it for this video i really hope you guys enjoyed and if you did please don't forget to like and subscribe and i'll see you for the next one goodbye